What if you could help others to find the power to heal themselves, physically, emotionally, and spiritually? When I started teaching my classes, it was in 2002, and I was just doing past life regressions and contacting the subconscious part. But then as the time went on and we found how powerful this was and what we could do with it, a lot of the students began saying, you know, advanced past life regression doesn't really tell what it's all about. This is so much more than that. We think you should change the name. So it was a few years ago, we decided to change the name to Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique. Help other people to speak to their higher selves. You can. Dolores Cannon has taught thousands of people from across the world how to use QHHT. Now you can learn her method by going directly to themoreshow.com forward slash QHHT. And don't forget to mention the discount coupon, More Talks. Joining me now is spiritual medium Lydia Lyne and her client Karen Edwards. Now Lydia has travelled throughout Europe sharing her gifts on both stage and screen. She's also gained a celebrity following who swear by her psychic abilities including Lee Ryans and Leona Lewis. Lydia is now using her gifts to help Karen whose daughter was taken away from her earlier this year. Lydia and Karen, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Now Lydia, what does Christmas mean to yourself? Well, it should mean peace, joy, and everything like that. A time of giving, but I mean us giving. You know what I mean? It's not about receiving gifts and stuff like that. It's about actually giving of ourselves. That's what I believe, helping each other, helping those that don't have um, a great deal, like people that are starving in foreign lands. It's about helping them. and given helping helping the world and you have helped karen who sat next to you a lot haven't you now karen well, apparently <laughs> just tell me about the, your background and the story of how you two met well i had never heard of lydia before um and after the death of my daughter this year i said to a friend of mine you know what you've got to do because at the end of the day it's always been my belief in what lydia does and she went out, seeked, and she found Lydia. Um, I went to see Lydia. Lydia didn't know my name. She knew nothing about me. And I walked away that evening feeling totally enlightened. Um, I'd been grieving for a while. And my husband said, when I got home that night, I actually looked 10 years younger. The stress had gone. And it actually confirmed everything that I'd believed in over the years. But people used to laugh at me and poo-poo the idea. Yeah. Because I've always believed. So what were you told? I were told things about my daughter. Um, but nobody else could have known. No. It was actually proof that there is life after death. And nobody will know what a great comfort that is to somebody. Because the natural progression in your life, you lose your grandparents, you lose your parents, but you don't lose your children, but you do lose your children. And for a parent to know that you will meet up again, you will see them again, they are around you. Yeah. Um, and I've seen Lydia on and off quite a you know, bit since this has all happened and she gives me that strength, okay. the belief in the So, so I mean, it, I mean it's, 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 a, it's a terrible process that you've been through. Horrendous. Um, but would you say you're, you're stronger now through meeting Lydia and yes. having this connection? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't know how I would have coped. Well, well, that's interesting. I mean, how do people cope at this time of year when you know they've lost a loved one because this is a this is a bad time of year for it really isn't it with, mm -hmm. with people going through problems 
It is. It is a horrendous time of year and um, people cope in many, many different ways. But when people come to me, I always say to them, you know, you can actually talk to your loved ones. They say to me, will you tell them this? Will you tell them that? Can you tell my mother that I love her and I put flowers on the grave? And I say, well, why have I to tell her? You can tell her. You've just told her yourself. You can speak to them. You can tell them anything they will see and they will hear because they're around you. But I personally send a Christmas card to people in the spirit world, like my mother, my sister and that. I will write a card to them. And I, you know, when you put all your Christmas cards out, you put them on the tree and on the mantelpiece. They're my ones to my dead relatives and friends all up there. And I know they can see them because I too, even though I'm a medium, I need to see a medium sometimes. And when a medium says to me, you sent your mum a Christmas card, didn't you? And I go, oh yeah. And my father was a heavy drinker. I always put a drink out at Christmas and say, there you are, Dad. Right. It's there for you. I'd be shocked if I come down and it was empty. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's your way of, of acknowledging, isn't yes. it? Yes. I mean, yes, Karen, but lots of people do the same thing. Oh, I, 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 absolutely. I mean, c can you relate to that, Karen? Yes, I can. Um, I suppose, really. I mean, I've been to see lots of mediums um, over the years. I've been with friends. You come back. Oh, they told me this. They told me that, and you take it quite lightheartedly. Then I lost my grandparents, and you know, you get a message through from them, and oh, it's lovely. That's really nice. But when it's from your daughter that nobody else would know, that is a truth to me that it, it really enhances your belief in it. Um, some people used to say, oh, here she goes, you know, think I was a bit crazy, but, but it's, it's my belief. It's your way of coping as well. Absolutely. I, I, absolutely. I, I mean, you've had to get counselling as well, haven't you? I mean, yes, this, the, I the, have. The work you've done with Lydia is just part of it, isn't and it? And my counsellor, when I first of all told her that, you know, my belief is the spirit world, I thought she's going to think, oh, she's really lost the plot now. But she said, you know, if it helps you, and Lydia has enhanced that help immensely. Yeah, yeah. And, and anyone that's going through a similar process as yourself right now, Karen, um, I mean, uh, there's there's many roads to recover, isn't there? And, and this has worked for you. Mm. Um, um, but I mean, how does someone, how, do you, how are you going to get through this Christmas? Is, is it just by being with friends and family or? I'm not going to say it's going to be easy because it's not. But it's my first Christmas. And it's okay. It's okay. It's, it, I mean, obviously, uh, Lydia, you, you know, you, you meet a lot of people uh, mm -hmm. in, in Karen's situation. Yeah. And um, you, you, obviously, there's, you must be surrounded with it. many Christmases being the same, same sort of process. Um, what advice would, would you give to people? Well, I would just say to them, you know, trust that you're going to see them eventually. Trust that they know and see you grieving and they wouldn't want that. And they are around you. You can talk to them. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. They're around us all the time, aren't they? And when you said uh, before as well about looking up or looking down, they can just be there, can't they, as well? They can be anywhere in the universe. When you die, it, you can be anywhere you want to be. You can be up there, you can be in Timbuktu, you can be with family in America, you you can be family here at Christmas. Some people say, oh, I've moved house, how will they know where to find me? Yes. Heck, they move house with you. <laughs> if you're yeah. going anywhere, doing anything, they'll be there. And Christmas was a family time. And I'm telling you, the spirit world will be all around you at Christmas, watching everything you do and thinking, oh, that turkey's burnt <laughs> as usual. You know what I mean? They'll yeah. be there watching, making their comments, joining in. It's just some people can't see them, some can't. But those that can will see them there. Yeah. And I know Karen's daughter's well, going to be there. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and yeah. that's an important question I've got for you, Karen, as well, is that you've got to believe, haven't you? You've oh. Because the signs are always there, aren't they? Well, when I say signs, um, I've had some very strange yeah, things happening yeah. to me since um, my daughter's death. 
things like keys going missing, turning up in strange places, yeah. electric lights going on and off, um, just very strange things happening in the house, which, yes, you could say, well, you know, perhaps you did put the key down there, perhaps you did lose the key, but it's not just me. Yes. <laughs> it's affected my husband, who I won't say he was a non-believer, but he was quite open-minded. He knew what I believed in when we married. Um, and he used to take the mickey out of me, you know, and <laughs> and I used to say, well, I, I believe in it. I don't care what you think. I believe. But I've come back from Lydia's and I've portrayed everything she said, not yeah. only to my husband, to, to my family. Um, and I think it's... It's a process, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. And I feel it's given them strength. It's not just me. I'm the one who's the filter, yes. and I'm going out and I'm actually telling my family what Lydia, but how would she have known that? How would she have known that? But her death, her passing has caused a very special relationship between you both, hasn't it? Incredible, actually. <laughs> you know. um, yeah. Yes, incredible. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, uh, Lydia, I mean, did you expect this? Or, I mean, this is not normal no. to have this sort of, no. this, which has been a seven month relationship now with this client in, in the sense of that you've both been healing each other, haven't you? Well, so tell us about that. I suppose that. in a way, but I feel very close to Karen. I've seen many people in Karen's situation, yeah. if you know what I mean. And I've worked with various local authorities on certain situations and with people. And I have never had that bond with anyone. But it's like when I look at Karen, I'm looking at a younger me, taller, <laughs> but a younger me. And they're just something. We seem to click. We seem to get on. And I just seem to know and feel what she's going through. Okay. So so how has Karen helped you yourself, would well, you say? Well, she's given me confidence because a lot of people look at me and they see me on stage, they see me on telly, and they think, oh, she's got confidence. Mm. But I have no confidence. I carry my teddy. This is my confidence. Right. I take him everywhere with me. But with Karen, when she tells me, you know, I said to her, I described her daughter because I see spirit and I described her and I said to her, she looks like this and the hair. And she said, oh, my God, you know, <laughs> you're so right. And then I think to myself, oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness. And it gives me confidence to carry on and give more because I question everything. I doubt everything. I'm a bit like doubting Thomas. Right. Well, we'll get into that just after the break. So uh, stay tuned as I'll continue to talk more to Lydia and Karen after the break. You're on a journey right now. A destination where you are headed full of adventure. And all around you are clues pointing you in the direction of your higher purpose and dreams. The signs and synchronicities can be seen. Whilst on a trip. At your local coffee shop. Within your social networks. The road to your success and happiness is scattered throughout the pictures of our days. Simply make the connection, that's all. Channeling.com is your source for highly regarded spiritual readers who can direct you on your journey. Use the code TMS1 to receive a discount on your first reading. Welcome back. I'm still joined by spiritual medium Lydia Lyne and her client Karen Edwards. Now, just before the break, I wanted to ask you about the small steps that we could make now to sort of help ourselves if we're going through a bad time. So, you know, it could just be a relationship breakup, which can be hard at the Christmas period, oh, yeah. or obviously, you know, depression and, you know, bereavement, which is a subject that's been heavily covered here today. I mean, what, what are some of the little steps we could help ourselves? Well, as I said, um, the thing is, I think back to the good times. And I think of what that person wanted and what they needed and what I need. And then I would try to move forward from there. If it was a bereavement, let's say, they wouldn't want you crying and no. weeping. They'd want you to get on with your life and enjoy it. But you see, it's all very well saying that. 
that person who is on the other side will be there with you enjoying the Christmas. If it's a loved one who, like a relationship, and it's broken up, I've been there that many times and catching up on Liz Taylor. <laughs> and I have to be totally honest. You just have got to let it go and acknowledge it for what it was and learn from it right. and move on with right. your so life. Right, so learn the lessons from it, would yes, you say? Yeah, definitely. Well, why don't we want to let go sometimes? Hmm... Sometimes it's good to let go because sometimes if you hold on to things, they can eat at you and destroy you. And, you know, not only will it destroy you, it destroys the family, it destroys the children. That is if it's a relationship. Yeah. But if it's a bereavement, I, I personally wouldn't let it go. I'd want them there. I'd want to know they were there. Well, well, that's right. I mean, obviously, Karen, you know, there's a, there's a process that you're going through right now. I mean, seven months on, you are very strong just to even come on this show right now. Mm. Yeah, and you you, you, mm. you can feel it in yourself, can't mm. you? The strength that you've gained mm. uh, in, in this process that you've gone through with, with, with Lydia. Um, w would you say laughter is an important part of that? Oh, yes. <laughs> and crying. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, they're both. This, yeah. It, one goes in hand with the yeah. other. We always say, remember this, remember when she did this. Yeah, ab absolutely. And would you also say that um, it's a process as well, isn't it, Lydia? You can't just rush things. Oh, no. You can't expect to be yeah. healed even after a year's time. And I've been told mm -hmm. that it, you know, it's a two-year process. Yeah. Yeah. Longer. Yeah, longer. Longer. Don't longer. rush it. What, what happens when you rush it? Well, I, I, it depends on the individual, but I, I've seen people have breakdowns from one thing or another because they've rushed it. Or I've seen people that just put it to the back of their mind and pushed it away. And it hasn't done them or their families any good because it will come back eventually. We all have to grieve. We all need to grieve and we all do it in our own way. But I, you said a two year period. I know people that are grieving 10 years. Well, my friend in Ireland, her husband's dead 10 years. And would you believe it? She's still got his ashes at the side of the bed. She still puts her hand in and says, good night, darling, into the urn. Yeah. And she's still grieving. She still cries about it. And she still rings me up and says, Lydia, help me, help me. And I keep telling her, Look for him. He's there, and I give her special information that only but she would know. But is that an example? And of, it helps. Is that an example of someone who's not open to as much help as you want to give them? Mm. That they they, they don't, are not willing to make the change to move on. In some ways, in some ways, um, she wants to believe, but she can't. Her religion won't allow her. Type of thing. She okay. blocks herself. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, so she just yes. won't move So then, forward. really, we have to appreciate everything around us, don't we? Mm. I mean, would you say Absolutely. that's true? Absolutely. Yeah. And I think this Christmas is probably going to be, it's going to be hard. Yeah. But then you, uh, with the support of Lydia, you're going to help mm. her get through this, aren't mm. you? Always. Yeah, yeah. Always. my friend. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And there's a, there's a, I can feel, sense there's a bit of a soul bond here. Do you know mm. that? So what would you say right now is most important to you in your, in your life? It's knowing I've got that contact. Yeah, knowing that that's there and oh. you can validate it yourself. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I've had this time, you yeah. know, you've, you've played around before, you know, it's like, you know, oh, they told me this, they told me that. Yes. But this is the real deal now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when you've gone through some of like you've gone through, Karen, where is it put into perspective things like money or careers and, and, and objects? If I could put everything in the pot and swap it for my daughter to be physically with me, I'd do it. Yeah. But I can't. So the next best thing is to know that she is there. And you can talk to her. Well, I do. I went to the grave yesterday. Um, but she's not really there. She's around us. And 
you know, this, she's given she's given me strength as well as Lydia. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely, she has. Yes. I mean, you, you could, like you said to me before the ad break. You mean you said you can sense her here now. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and that's a, of great strength yes. to you, isn't it? Yeah. Lydia keeps yeah. telling me. <laughs> yeah. She's well, just Well, you've mentioned there, you know? it again and again, <laughs> haven't you? The, the, the well, I just say I keep seeing her. I, I never met the girl. No. Never met her when Karen well, came. Well, you have, to haven't you, in a sense? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, I yeah. have. But when, in that way, but when Karen came to see me, I seen her and I described her and right down to her shoe size. Really? Even, yeah. Even that. Yeah. Yes. And, and that's look the at validation me, for you, isn't it? Yes, mm. but you would expect I'm tall. You would expect, you know, my daughter to be tall. My son's tall. You know, every member of the family is tall. Mm. She's a little dot. She's an. <laughs> She's like Lydia, mm, yeah. um, and Lydia's personality would have married with my daughter's but, personality. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I feel as well that not every medium would connect with the spirit. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, uh, mm. that, that's an interesting point, isn't it? Because some people do connect with certain mediums, don't they? Yes, and I felt that um, <laughs> Lydia had her off to a fine art, her mannerisms. Shoes. Shoe size. <laughs> yeah, the shoe shoes. size, yeah. The, the yeah. platform shoes, because she wanted to be tall. Everything about her, her hair, uh, her mannerisms, the, the way she was, the way she laughed, and everything about her was just so spot on. That I was just so dumbfounded. So, obviously, mm. obviously, you know, a, a pre, you know, if someone is watching this now, that's going through a bad time, you know, look at what it does to other people. Your actions sometimes as well. Appreciate everyone right now that's around you. Absolutely. Appreciate the things that you have. Yes. Mm. Even if it's not a lot, it doesn't matter. No. Just say, "Well, I, I'm so grateful for what, what I've got." Because yes. it's now that matters. And also, yes. be great. I mean, you go into a shop. How many people these days say thank you? They don't. How many people part living in the same apartment block just to acknowledge someone else? They don't else? know. It's, it's just become such a vast world and nobody seems to be interested in you anymore. You just pass a by, you know. Well, well, then, do you think Christmases before were different in, in a sense? Oh, yes. yes. It's about Great. material things now. You it's really you feel that, do you? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's not. Yes. It's. I mean, the children, they expect the latest <laughs> computer game yeah which is hundreds and hundreds of pounds iphone 4s yep this year's yeah. top I mean, of the list some parents cope when there's no i mean you know there's, there'll be single parents out there you know on the bread line won't they especially this year mm -hmm. i mean you know, absolutely i mean maybe do you think the some children, of the values we're teaching our kids are, are the wrong things absolutely and i think they should look back to how it was i mean well how, how was it how well was it for me i've always had wonderful family christmases mm. um always sort of got together my grandparents they were the you know they were our loving grandparents um but we never had I mean Nan used to bake the homemade mince Absolutely. pies and you Absolutely. know Grant would go to the allotment and buy the vegetables you know get the vegetables for the Sunday roast and the Christmas dinner wonderful I've got those good memories yeah wonderful memories yeah. Lydia don't have that so <laughs> pleasure so would you say Lydia it's just as important to give as it is to receive yeah very much i am a giver of life um i'm a giver of everything i've got you are and i i'm quite happy to give i find i have to be totally honest here i find it very difficult to receive why is that that's surprising I yeah and i get presents from all over the world from people i get gifts sent to me rings like karen gave me this wonderful Beautiful, ring. It really yeah is, i yeah, love it yeah. and she said you've got to wear it when you're on tv uh, and stage <laughs> and i do and i must admit i i wear it all the time but i just find it difficult to take money i find it difficult to take gifts well, yeah. Okay. Maybe it's because of my childhood, because of what happened. Okay, okay. But you could heal that. that but that's a, that's a very long-term healing process, oh, that, yes, isn't it? Yes. It's a lifetime's yes. worth of work, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and I'm nearly yeah. at the end of my life, so you know, <laughs> I don't better think so hurry just up. Yet, well, no. I'm 65 <laughs> this year. Oh, come on, that's so, not all. So, you know what I mean? I'd better hurry up. <laughs> well, if you could un unwrap one present this year, what would it be for yourself? Do you know, you asked me that early on. I want a peace and love for the world. And I kept thinking of all the wee dogs and cats and crates abroad that are 
kept alive in a crate and cut up and eaten uh, the way they do in Cuba and places yeah. like that. That really hurts me and the, way, and the way you see animals abused. And I thought about what you said, I wanted peace and love. And I wanted all the animals to be loved and cared for. But it's weird, while I've been sat here, something else popped in. Okay. And you're never going to believe this in 10 million years. My grandmother, who was bad to me. Oh, now, isn't that beautiful? So I would like her. I'm getting emotional oh. now. I would like her to come and talk to me. Right. Are you ready for that? Yeah, I think I w I've forgiven her for everything she did. And I would just like her to come back and sit down and talk to me and be my friend. And for yourself, Karen, what's what one sort of present that you'd like to unwrap this? Well, I hope the obvious one. Yeah, yeah. But the strength in my belief. Right. And I think that people should open up and become open-minded. And they'll get a great comfort, okay. like I have. Okay, okay. Well, Lydia and Karen, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. It's been a no complete pleasure thank to have you real on. It really has. For more information on Lydia, visit my website, themoreshow.co.uk. Don't go anywhere, as I'll see you after the break.